Hello friends, this is Durga from IT University. I run a YouTube channel um, and uh, I started uploading a lot of content on uh, various technologies. So far I have covered uh, uh, Hadoop uh, both from developer perspective as well as uh, administrator's uh, perspective extensively. And also I have uh, uploaded uh, a lot of content on Amazon Web Services. Uh, we are also working on Spark, uh, Oracle and many other technologies. And over time we, we would like to make it a free one-stop stop for almost all the technologies. So as part of my channel, I typically uploaded, upload the content in the form of playlists. And um, uh, there is a series of playlists called Getting Started. Um, I have uh, done one for Hadoop, one for HBase. And I would like to uh, upload uh, uh, for many other technologies to get started. So in the context of NoSQL, we have many uh, industry leading NoSQL databases, HBase, Cassandra, MongoDB, DynamoDB, uh, and many more. And over time, I would like to upload, at least to get started with those technologies without uh, initial hiccups. So as part of that effort, now I will be talking about DynamoDB, which is a AWS uh, uh, NoSQL database service and uh, these will be the topics which will be covered we will be seeing the overview uh, of uh, dynamodb and we will see how we can actually set up on aws we will see dynamodb command line interface uh, how to set up on virtual machine and then we will see how we can actually integrate aws plugin with eclipse and start developing with uh, uh, Eclipse IDE, uh, simple Java programs. We'll start with the uh, sample project and we will develop our own Java based program uh, to perform the basic operations using Java based APIs. And also towards the end, we will see how to uh, data model uh, um, uh, in DynamoDB. So, coming to overview, these are the topics uh, that will be covered. DynamoDB is a fully managed NoSQL database service provided by uh, AWS or Amazon Web Services and first we'll get into DynamoDB versus Relational Database. Here are the uh, differences. So uh, we, uh, H, sorry, it's DynamoDB, not HBase. So DynamoDB is a column oriented uh, database whereas the RDBMS is row oriented, most of the RDBMS databases. DynamoDB uh, contains flexible schemas similar to HBase. Uh, columns can be added on the fly, whereas RDBMS, it's a fixed schema. You have to predefine all the column names, data types, etc. Whereas in DynamoDB, that is not the case. It is designed to store denormalized data in the form of key and value, uh, whereas RDBMS is designed to store normalized data. DynamoDB is good for sparse tables, whereas RDBMS is not optimized for sparse tables. DynamoDB is tightly integrated with AWS. Uh, RDBMS, uh, um, uh, AWS have a service called RDS where they support uh, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, uh, Amazon proprietary databases like Aurora, etc. But uh, it is not as tightly integrated as DynamoDB when it comes to RDBMS databases. And uh, DynamoDB, uh, AWS provides linear scalability using auto sharding and you don't need to worry about adding uh, more nodes to the cluster or uh, reduce the size of the cluster. You don't need to worry about the storage or the cluster size. It will be added automatically um, as you load the data. And uh, you will be charged only for read and write capacity and you will not be charged uh, uh, on the amount of data you are storing uh, into DynamoDB. Even if they charge, it will be very nominal. When it comes to RDBMS, it is hard to shard and scale. Uh, DynamoDB is good for semi-structured data as well as structured data, whereas RDBMS is only good for structured data. DynamoDB does not follow COTS rule and it is not suitable for transactional based systems. When I say transactional based systems, if you want to perform multiple operations um, on multiple tables and if you want to commit or roll back uh, so that uh, you, will, you will always be in consistent state then it is called as transaction based systems. Examples for transaction based systems are um, the banking, core banking applications, retail point of sale applications, etc. 
So if you take the example of core banking, if I if there are two accounts and if you want to uh, credit from uh, if you want to debit from one account and credit into another account, uh, it it will touch multiple rows in, uh, from multiple tables in the database, and you have to either commit or roll back all the operations that are performed on multiple rows on multiple tables uh, as one unit. If you if you if you are not able to do that, then uh, your database will be in consistent state, and uh, your application will be flawed. So DynamoDB does not follow uh, is not suitable for transaction based systems, um, and uh, uh, hence it does not follow COTS rules. Whereas if if you want to build a transaction based system, that uh, databases need to adhere COTS rules, and RDBMS is designed for that. So, uh, what are the use cases that can be implemented using DynamoDB? Um, use cases like recommendation engines. So, when you go go into Amazon uh, website, when you choose the um, when you choose a product, there will be uh, it will actually provide you the recommended products along with the product. So, uh, it, uh, using the product ID. Um, uh, our nightly jobs will will try to match uh, the uh, the frequently uh, shopped products. Uh, uh, it is called as affinity uh, affinity products. So if you uh, if you buy uh, for example if you buy a swimsuit, there is a high probability that you will buy a swim goggles um, or swim shoe or some other swim uh, attire, and those are all related. Uh, so that is called as affinity and uh, nightly jobs will actually uh, try to match all the related products and it will store uh, a NoSQL uh, database uh, or a, no, a table in NoSQL database uh, and their product ID will be key and all the related products uh, will be the value for that key and DynamoDB will work very well in those kinds of scenarios. So there are no transactions associated with it, you just have to get all the recommended products by passing the product ID. Uh, so in those scenarios where transactions are not that important but still you want to get data in real time at scale, then DynamoDB is the solution. So uh, traditional uh, for the use cases which I have explained earlier, uh, like uh, 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 like uh, recommendation systems or even uh, the LinkedIn uh, endorsements. Uh, wherein you, uh, there are millions of users in LinkedIn and each user will have uh, new, uh, numerous endorsements and all those things have to be stored in a database and if you, if you try to use relational database, um, it cannot scale linearly and the reason is, uh, I will go to the Oracle architecture and try to explain why it, it does not scale linearly and how um, uh, NoSQL databases like uh, DynamoDB or HBase can solve the problem. So typically when it comes to Oracle database you will have a storage rack um, and um, all the uh, horizontal rectangles in blue color are, uh, are the, um, simulated hard disks and the storage admin will create the storage pools from these um, uh, numerous hard disks and that storage pool will be mounted onto the uh, multiple database servers uh, that are used to build your Oracle database uh, and using the network switch and there will be another dedicated network switch which, which will interconnect the, uh, between the database servers. And when you actually try to get a uh, recommended products by passing the product ID, you need to run a select query and that select query uh, will be compiled into um, uh, will be compiled into native language and uh, then it will perform the IO uh, connecting to the storage over the network and try to fetch the data uh, and when you actually trying to fetch the data for uh, millions of users then the, uh, uh, typically the IO happens at the block size and the block size is uh, uh, can be 8 KB or 16 KB or 32 KB and uh, if you have too many records in that block, um, multiple requests can come for that block from different databases. And uh, in that case, what will happen is um, and the data has to travel between the database servers using uh, interconnect if the data is already in memory. Otherwise, it has to do 
network io go to the storage and get the data so internally uh, it is fine if you don't understand completely but this architecture um, will limit the scalability capability of your uh, relational database and also even if it can scale scaling up the relational databases like oracle is quite expensive uh, and also it is cumbersome you, it will take a lot of time to actually uh, add more nodes to the cluster so uh, in the scenarios like uh, uh, recommendation engines for your products and also endorsements in a, in the linkedin uh, all these things um, uh, traditional databases like oracle might not be feasible it is very costly to start to maintain and also even after spending lot of money it cannot scale linearly for that reason no sql databases come into picture and dino db is one of them it is highly scalable Uh, it is distributed so data internally will be distributed um, uh, on um, on multiple nodes in the cluster and when it comes to amazon you don't need to worry about all these things it is internally implemented um, it is um, the data is fault tolerant so even internally if one of the servers in amazon goes down the data will be available on multiple nodes and it will uh, push you the results without any issues easy to set up and manage you don't need to even uh, download the binaries you just go to aws web console create the table and you will be able to manage and data is stored in key and value formats as long as you can build the key and try to get the uh, associated value and the performance will be very very good and pricing uh, you can leverage the pay as you go model or on demand model and you will be only paying for read and write capacity units as well as indexes so it could be very cheap to kick start your project um, uh, for for uh, uh, the use cases like recommendation engines uh, endorsement engines etc which are not uh, transactional in nature but in operational in nature so this is the brief overview about uh, dynamo db and uh, in the subsequent videos we will see how we can actually set up dynamo db in aws console in uh, uh, as well as command line interface and also we will see how to set up uh, the environment uh, and all those things uh, so we will see all these details as part of 2 to 3 hour uh, video playlist that being said i hope you you uh, you, uh, you enjoy the content on my channel if you like this video please click on the like button if you have any feedback or uh, if you have any technical questions please uh, uh, leverage the comment section of the video and if you have not subscribed to my channel yet please do so you will see lot more content like this over time that i am i am sure that the channel will get bigger and better um, over time thank you bye